Hello friends, we are meeting once again, post CAT now. We had met a few days ago before CAT 19 happened and now CAT 19 has happened in its history. So in light of what we discussed before CAT, how did CAT 19 look is the objective of this talk today. We are going to discuss in particular pawn sections of both the slots, slot 1 as well as slot 2. You may know this, you may not know this, but to get a 90 percentile in pawn section, in CAT 17 you needed 40 marks, in CAT 18 30 marks and most experts now project that in CAT 19 you would need 35 marks in pawn section to get a 90 percentile in QA. What does this mean? 35 marks means if you attempted 12 questions and all correct, you would have cleared that. Or if you attempted 17, 18 questions with reasonable accuracy, please understand these many questions out of 34 total, you would be there in terms of 90 percentile. So we needed to attempt, let us say, 16 to 18 questions out of 34. We had talked about some very, very elementary, foundational, basic topics before CAT. And we've been talking about that in class as well. You will remember me as Sri Ram Joshi, I'm associated with Time Pune. So in class I've been saying this, we have been saying this, and before CAT also I've said it. Please stick to the basic topics like arithmetic, geometry and algebra, the elementary algebra, and you will feel comfortable even in the exam. There were 20 plus questions on these two topics alone in CAT 17 as well as CAT 18 and CAT 19 also had 20 questions and only on arithmetic and geometry. So if you had practiced these two, you would have been very comfortable. What we are going to discuss is about 17 to 18 questions of slot 1 and maybe later slot 2, not each and every question of the entire, entire slot with the idea that how these questions could have been solved or how the appropriate option could have been selected based on common sense by using the options alone and by using standard shortcuts. Nothing very abstruse, nothing that you have to tax your memory about, something that is very obvious looking at the question. So we are going to talk about about half of each of these slot 1 and slot 2 with the intention to show you how you could have done uh, or cracked 90 percentile. This is obviously going to be useful to people who are going to do more exams now in the 2019 and 20 management entrance exam season and obviously for CAT 20 candidates who feel little uncomfortable when the, when the word quantitative ability is used. The not so gifted, at least in their personal opinion, I think would be helped by looking at this video in its entirety. So uh, we are not going to do the entire section, only half of it. We will do the remaining questions at a later date, but not today. Let's begin. Friends, now we will talk about uh, slot 2, quad section of CAT 19. Remember the basic intention is not to solve each and every question today. But to demonstrate to you that there are sufficient number of questions, more than half of the section in fact, that could have been done by practically anybody who was focused on some fundamental topics like arithmetic, geometry and elementary algebra. So we'll take up those questions, I'll show you how they could have been solved and you could have easily attained the projected cutoff for 90 percentile which is supposed to be around 35 or 36. Let us start with the first question which is about ratio proportion and percentages Ramesh, Ganesh and Rajesh so Ramesh, Ganesh and Rajesh the salary than the ratio 6 to 5 to 7 in 2010 so in 2010 the uh, salaries are 600 let us say 500 and 700 Arbitrary. Instead of taking x and y, taking it to be 100, 600, 500, 700. And in the ratio 3 is to 4 is to 3 in 2015. Now here I cannot take it to be the same ratio as 300, 400, 500. Let us wait. 
Ramesh's salary increased by 25% during 2010 and 2015. So this increased by 25%. 25% is one fourth. What is one fourth of 600? 150. So it increased by 150, so salary became 750. Now what are they telling us? The ratio of the salary is, is 3 is to 4 is to 3. If this 3 corresponds to 750, this 3 also is 750 and this 4 is going to be 1000. What is the final question? The percentage increase in Rajesh's salary during this period is close to what is the increase, actual increase? 50. Percentage increase? 50 divided by 700 into 100 to, 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 approximately 7%. Another popular topic in arithmetic is time and work. So let us look at the time and work question from slot 2. Time and work is usually a story. So you just have to sort of be patient and understand the story before you start doing anything. Anil alone can do a job in 20 days and Sunil alone can do it in 40 days. So the usual LCM of 20 and 40 job will consist of 40 units. That means Anil, who does the job in 20 days, does 2 units a day. And uh, his partner, uh, Sunil, does it in 40 days. So Sunil does 1 unit a day. So Anil does in 20 days, Sunil does in 40 days. You are familiar with this method. Anil starts the job and after three days Sunil joins him. Anil starts the job alone and works for three days. So in that, in those three days, he has done six units alone. Then what happened? Then uh, Sunil joins him. And after a few more days, Bimal joins them and they together finish the job. So three days Anil alone. This is Anil alone. Some days Anil and Sunil and some more days Anil, Sunil and Bimal. Bimal does 10% of the job. What is the job? 40 units. 10% of 40, 4 units. So Bimal has done 4 units. Six units done by Anil alone in those three days. Bimal has done 40 units. And so these people together must have done 40 minus 10, 30 units. How many do they do per day? 2 plus 1, 3. So they must have worked together 30 divided by 3 or 10 days. What is the question? The question is in how many Days the job was done. Anil worked for three days alone. We work ten days together. Ten plus three. Answer. As simple as that. Thirteen days. Geometry is an important topic. Plain geometry that you all studied in high school. No theorems, no proofs. So CAD geometry is actually simple. Let us look at a simple question in geometry. AB is a right angle triangle with hypotenuse BC of length 20. No geometry problem will now have a diagram. You cannot expect a diagram. So draw a diagram. BC is the hypotenuse. So this is B, this is C of length 20 and A is the right angle. AP is the perpendicular on BC. So AP is the perpendicular on BC. Question. What is the maximum possible length of AP? Don't have to worry about anything, it's just common sense. What is fixed is BC. So if BC comes very close to A, we are looking at a triangle like this, and AP will be small. What if B is very close to A, then we are looking at a triangle which is like this, and again, AP is going to be very small. We want to maximize AP. Where will it be maximized? Without any proof, just common sense. 
it will maximize when AC and DC are equally. So the diagram now is these are two equal in length, this is 20, and this becomes an isosceles triangle and perpendicular drawn to the base will divide it or bisect it in a right angle triangle. All these three lengths are equal, so 10, 10, and 10. Answer 10. Common sense. Another popular subtopic, time and distance. Another problem from slot 2, one section. Two ants. Okay, a big deal. Two ants A and B start from point P on the circle at the same time. A moving clockwise, B moving counterclockwise. Diagram. Start from P. A moves clockwise. B moves counterclockwise. They meet for the first time at 10 a.m. when A has covered 60 percent of the track. Please understand, diametrically opposite will be 50 percent. So A has covered 60 percent. That means B in the same time has covered 40 percent. And this is where they are meeting at 10 a.m. What do we learn from this sentence? In the same time, wherever they started, A has covered 60%, B has covered 40%. The speed of A to speed of B has to be in the ratio of the distance covered. Because time is same. So 60 by 40. A is one and a half times faster than B, and A is that much faster than B. What is the question? If A returns to P at 10, 12, A returns to P at 10, 12. 12 minutes past 10. So 12 minutes have passed. A takes 12 minutes to cover this distance. They're asking us. When does B come back to B? How much distance does B have to cover? B has to cover 60%. Please understand, what is happening for A? Distance covered is now 40% at a speed of 3 and the time taken is 12 minutes. A speed 3. Distance covered by A, 40%. 40% distance covered, 3 is the speed, time taken is 12. What about B? B now has to cover all the way, 60% of the distance, but at what speed? 2. They are asking us how much time required. The time required would be in the inverse proportion of the speed, so 12 times if they have to cover the same distance. Even then, B would have taken 18 minutes. But B has to cover a distance which is one and a half times. So again, we have to multiply this. How difficult can this be? 27 minutes. So B will reach point A at 10. Back to geometry. Plane geometry, triangles, medians, perpendiculars, all those kind of good things. In a triangle, medians AD and BE are perpendicular to each other. Please don't draw the triangle. Draw the medians first. Because the medians when they intersect, you know, they divide each other in the ratio 2 to 1. The lengths are also so nice. AD is 12 and BE is 9. So, AD is 12. Dividing into ratio 2 to 1, this will be 8 and this will be 4. The longer section towards the vertex, this is 80. BE is 9, so which means we are dividing into ratio 2 to 1, 6 and 3, and this is BE and this is E. Please understand, these are the two vertices of the triangle. These are the two midpoints of the opposite side. So what does the triangle look like? The triangle actually looks like this. This is, right. this is equal to this. This is equal to this. What's the question? 
So this is a triangle. The question is, what is the area of this triangle? Wow! You know that this triangle, if you actually draw the third medium, all these six triangles that are formed are of equal area. So these two triangles together will be one third of the triangle ABC. This is a right angle triangle. But the area of a right angle triangle, man, base into height into half, 8 into 6 into 1 half, this is 24. Area of the triangle, 3 times 24, 72. There are always arithmetic questions which are ratio proportion base, percentage base, some exam, some mark, some passing thing, etc. etc. Let's look at another question, arithmetic. Brahma's score was one twelfth of the sum of scores of Mohan and Anjali. So Brahma. Mohan Anjali. Brahma is one twelfth of who? Mohan. Read the sentence again if you are confused. Rama's score is one twelfth of the sum of the scores of Mohan and Anjali. After a review, the score of each of them was increased by six. So after review, Rama became R plus six, Mohan became R plus M plus six, Anjali became A plus six. Each score increased by six. The revised score of Anjali, Mohan and Rama in the ratio 11 to 10 to 3. What is the ratio? Anjali, Mohan, Rama. Anjali is 11, Mohan is 10, Rama is 3. This is the revised score. After review, the ratio of these three scores, Anjali to Mohan to, uh, to Rama is 11 to 10 to 3. Which means, if I add these two, it will be 21 to 3, which means R plus 6 is going to be 1 seventh of these two together, A plus M plus 12. Now see what's happening. M plus A is equal to 12R. So this whole thing is 12R. Substitute. 7 times is 7R plus 42 will be equal to 12R plus 12. Can you not simplify this? 5R equal to 30. R must be 6. So R is 6. If R is 6, if R is 6, what is this? 12. If this is 3 to 11, 4 times, so this will be 4 times, 44. If A plus 6 is 44, A must be 28. R is 6. What is the difference between 38 and 6? Answer would be 32. Another question on marks in examination. Score of A was 10% less than that of B. I hope you remember your percentage. A is 10% lower than that of B. It repeats B, B got 100, A got 90. Score of A is 10% less than that of B. Score of B was 25% more than that of C. It means if C was 100, B would have been 125. But B's, we have taken it to be 100. So C's score would be 100 over 125 times 100, which means 8. So C is 8. Let us be sure. Score of A is 10% less than that of B which is 90, if B is 100, and score of B was 25% more than that of C. If B is 100, C would be 80. We just did it by ratio proportion. 
स्कोर ऑफ सी वॉज ट्वेंटी परसेंट लेस देन दैट ऑफ डी स्कोर ऑफ सी इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट लेस देन दैट ऑफ डी सो वॉट इज द स्कोर ऑफ डी इज एन दिस ऑल्सो ट्वेंटी परसेंट वॉन्ट डी ऑल्सो ए हंड्रेड सी इज ट्वेंटी परसेंट लेस देन दैट ऑफ डी सो दिस इज ए टी इज ऑल्सो ए हंड्रेड सो डी ऑल्सो गेट्स वन हंड्रेड इफ ए स्कोर सेवेंटी टू A marks are seventy-two, which represents ninety in our table. Then they want to know what is the score of D. If ninety represents seventy-two, hundred will represent what? Just the table. Nine times eight, ten times eight. That is the answer. Eight. Questions on simple equations sometimes have numbers which are slightly unfriendly. But you have been provided with a calculator, and that is why you should not be afraid of attempting these questions when they are just based on the concept of simple equation. In the library, in 2010, 11,500 books in two categories: fiction and non-fiction. So, fiction and non-fiction together, 11,500. This is a situation in 2010. The situation in 2010. Then what happened? In 2015, the library contained 12,760 books. Please understand, these are not very friendly numbers. They are not in thousand, perfect thousands, or hundreds, or anything like that. This is the situation in 2015. Total number of books twelve thousand seven sixty. During the period, there was a ten percent increase in the fiction category. Ten percent increase means multiplication by one point one. So one point one f plus something with non-fiction. The non-fiction increased by twelve percent. So one point one two n. This is ten percent increase. This is twelve percent increase, and the total is this. If you see the setup, two equations, two variables, you should be able to solve it. But there is a small trap, a small twist. How many fiction books were there in the library in two thousand fifteen? They are interested in this. So once you get the value of f, you must multiply it by one point one. That's the last thing. How do you solve these equations? It's up to you. What I would do is eliminate one variable, which means I will multiply these numbers, the, uh, this equation, by 1.1. So 1.1 f plus 1.1 n into so 11,500 times 1.1. You can use your calculator, or you can say this is one. Point one would be 11,50, and so this would be. Well, 650. The difference between these two, there is no difference here. 1.1, 1.12, so 0.02 n non-fiction is going to be the difference between these two. 760 minus 650, which is 110. This is 1 by 50, and so n is going to be 5,500. Which means f eleven thousand five hundred minus this f is six thousand, but we don't want f. We want one point one times f, and so the answer is six thousand six hundred. Simple equations, unfriendly numbers. You can use the calculator or whichever other method you know to do the calculations. Just be patient. Don't rush. Just because the question looks simple. Be accurate. Arithmetic, simple interest, compound interest, slightly long, slightly complicated question. Amal invests twelve thousand at eight at eight percent interest, compounded annually, and ten thousand at six percent interest, compounded semi-annually. Semi-annually means it will be the compounding will be done every six months. Two compounding periods per year. 
both investments being only for one year. Oh, nice, one year. So compounded annually has no meaning. It's just simple interest. What a situation? Twelve thousand at eight percent. Simple interest because compounded annually for one year is same as that. The interest you get will be nine hundred and sixty rupees. We have ten thousand at six percent interest compounded semi annually. What does it mean? What is the interest in the first six months? The interest rate will be half of this, so three percent of ten thousand. So for the first six months, I'm going to have three hundred rupees as interest. And now 10,300 would be the capital for which another 3% will be earned in the second six months. Second six months. What is 3% of this? It's not that difficult. You just have to eliminate these two zeros, multiply this by 3, so 309. Let us recap. This was compounded annually, so for every year, for the first year it's definitely simple interest. So this investment earned in 960 rupees. This was compounded semi-annually, so 6% being the rate. First period earned in 300, second period of 6 months earned in 309. Okay. Bima invest his money at 7.5% simple interest for one year. Amal and Bimal get the same amount of interest. Oh, what is the interest that Amal has earned? Total of all this? 960 plus 300 plus 309. So it is 1569. This is the interest earned also by, by Bimal. Bimal earns interest of this by 1569. At the rate of 7.5%, what we don't know is uh, what is the investment, what is the principal? How difficult can that be? P times 7.5 over 100 is 1569. Use the calculator, please. Don't try to do this by in your head or by hand. Little complicated, and so uh, this P will then turn out to be exactly 20,920. So, this was a theta question, very difficult to see number, but you have a calculator, so rest, be at peace, use the calculator whenever needed. Until this point, we don't need it. Now, use it in this answer. Time and distance. A popular topic for these exams. So, no surprise at all that there are a few questions on time and distance in slot 2 of CAT 19. Let us look at one question like that. John jogs on track A at 6 kilometers per hour. So, John track is A, speed is 6 kmph. Mary jogs on track B at 7.5 kmph. Drag B, 7.5 kmph. The total length of tracks A and B is 325. A plus B is 325 meters. Okay. While John makes 9 rounds on track A, Mary makes 5 rounds of track B. Let's understand this. John makes five rounds of track A. Sorry, nine rounds of track A. So distance covered by John is nine times A. But the time that he will take would be this divided by six kilometers per hour. This will be A is in kilometers, this is in hours, this will be the time. In the same time, Mary does five rounds of track B. That means she covers a distance of five times B 
at a speed of 7.9. The time taken by both, this must be equal. What is the statement? While John does 9 rounds of track A, Mary does 5 rounds of track B. So, this must be the relationship. What do we get out of this? We get the relationship between A and B. Okay, let's do that. This is 5, this is 4. So, what does it mean? 9A is equal to 4B. A would be shorter, B would be larger. So if B is, if, it's okay, let's put it this way. If A is 9, B would be 4. Very fine. If A is, A to B, I'm sorry, I think I made it wrong. If A is 4, B would be 9. Sorry about that. What's the total? 30. But what is the total? 325. Is 325 divisible by 30? Oh yeah. Exactly. It's equal to 25. Which means what? Track A is 4 times 25, 100 meters. Track B is 225 meters. What is the question? We haven't even read the question yet. The question is, in how many seconds will Mary make one round of track A? Ah. Mary's speed, I know. I know the length of track A. So 100 meters divided by what is the speed? 7500 meters divided by 3600. She would take these many seconds to make a round of track A. She was running on track B, but the question is about track A. So these are the twists and turns in the question. This is not very difficult. Do -do -do -do. These two cancel. This 75 and this will become 4 and 3. This 36 will go up. And this will become 12. 12 times 4, 48. She will complete one round of track A. 48 seconds. Back to profit loss percentages. See how simple the question can be. It cannot be an easier, there cannot be an easier sitter. Mukesh purchased 10 bicycles at the same price. He sold 6 of these at a profit of 25%. The usual cost price 100. Profit 25%. And so profit is 25. 6 bicycles. So of these 6 he made 150 rupees profit if his cost price was 100. He sold 6 at the profit of 25% and remaining 4 at a loss of 25%. So on that he lost 25 rupees on 4 bikes. So he lost 100 rupees. He gained 150. He lost 100. Total is a gain of 50 rupees if the cost price is 100. The actual cost price, the actual total profit is 2000, not cost price. So this 50 corresponds to 2000. Then they are asking us, what is the cost price of each bicycle? What does 100 correspond to? My God! 50 became 100, 2000 will become 4000. That's it. Done. Thank you. One important topic which is, can be slightly complicated is about mixtures. There is a slightly long question with a story and there are uh, three solutions. The strength of a salt solution is considered to be 3% if 100 milliliters of the solution contains D grams of salt. P percent means P grams of salt for 100 ml of the solution. That is what they have given us. A, B, C contain each three vessels, the three vessels now, A, B, C, 
they all contains 500 ml of solution. All have the same volume, 500 ml. And the concentration is 10%, 22%, and 32%. 10 22%, 32%, 32%. 10 grams per, per 100 ml. And therefore, therefore, for uh, 500 ml, will be 50 grams. Salt. 50 grams. Salt would be 5 times this, 110 grams. And 5 times this, 160 grams. This is the situation without doing anything yet. Now, 100 ml of solution vessel A is transferred to the vessel B. 100 was taken from here. So what happened? 100 ml went from here to here. So B, when A went to B, B became 600 ml. How much salt was transferred? 100 ml out of this, so one fifth. So 10 grams went from here to here. So I have now 120 grams. See? What has happened? 120 over 600. This is not 20 percent. The solution, which was 10 percent, part of it was added to this. So this will obviously come down. It will become 20 percent now. The story has not ended yet. 100 ml of solution in B is transferred to vessel C. When 100 ml went, how much salt will go? 20 grams of salt will go. So C, which is now going to become new is again 600 ml and there will be 20 grams of salt added to this so this will become 180 grams what is the strength what is the percentage 180 by 6 30 percent so C solution which was 32 has now become 30 percent B which was 22 percent is has become 20%. Last thing, 100 ml of solution in vessel C is transferred to vessel A. This is transferred to vessel A. 100 ml of 30%, which means what? This was 500, 100 went here, but again 100 came back, so again we have 500 back. Original volume. Out of 50 grams, 10 grams had gone, so 40 had remained, but how many came with this 100 ml, another 30, 30%, 30 so with 100 ml you get 30 grams, so this is the situation at the end of the story, we have 70 grams of salt in 500 ml of solution, in vessel A, the question is, what is the concentration of salt in vessel A? 70 divided by 500 into 140%. So, what is the learning from something like this? Just follow it, follow the story, the numbers are pretty good. You don't have to write any equations. Just follow the story diligently, be patient. You will get the right answer, don't worry. Time and distance, cyclists and motorcycles. A cyclist leaves A at 10 a.m. and reaches B at 11 a.m. And starting at 10.01, every minute, a motorcycle leaves A and moves towards B. So two things are happening. This is A, this is B. I have a cyclist, so bicycle, he leaves at 10, reaches at 11, he takes one hour. There are motorcycles leaving every minute and going towards me, motorcycles. So this is the situation. 45 such motorcycles reach B by 11 a.m. 
45. So that means 1045, the motorcycle that left at 1045 has reached at 11 a.m. All the motorcycles have the same speed. So each motorcycle will take how many minutes? 15 minutes to go from A to B. This motorcycle will reach at 1016. This motorcycle, will so there are 45 motorcycles that reach point B by the time cyclist goes from A to B in one hour. That's the situation. If the cyclist doubled his speed, doubled his speed, time would be half. So now he won't require up to 11 o'clock. He will now reach at 10.30. This is the new time at which he will reach B because he has doubled his speed. If the cyclist doubled his speed, how many motorcycles would have reached B by the time cyclists reached B? How many? My God. 10.16, first motorcycle reached. From here to 10.30, how many? 15. 15 motorcycles. Done. Geometry, regular polygons. Please remind yourself, regular polygon means sides are equal and the angles are equal. Equilateral triangle, regular polygon. Square is a regular polygon. Rectangle is not. Rhombus is not. Hexagon, regular hexagon, etc. etc. What is the question? A and B are two regular polygons having small a and small b sides. B is equal to 2 times A. B has B sides, A has A sides, and it is given that B is 2 times A. Each interior angle of B, interior angle of B, is 1 and a half times interior angle of A. That's what is given. What in degrees? Then each interior angle of regular polygon with A plus B sides. Interior angle of a regular polygon with these B sides. Obviously, we have to find out what is A and what is B. I won't write an equation. I will just start doing things with these numbers. If the smallest polygon I have is a equilateral triangle, so A can be 3. If A is 3, then B is 6. What is the interior angle of an equilateral triangle? That is 60. What is the interior angle of a regular hexagon? It is 120. Now 60 and 120 are not related like this, so this is not correct. What is the next number? Square. This is 4. Interior angle is 90. This is an octagon. How to find out the interior angle of the octagon? I'll show you. This is octagon. I'll, this is only a reminder actually. We do this in class all the time. Each of these angles, there are eight such exterior angles which are equal to each other and they all add up to 360. So exterior angle is 360 by 40 by 8, I'm sorry which is 45 and so interior becomes 135 if this is 45 this whole thing is 180 and therefore this is 135 so 135 oh 90 times one and a half is 135 so a is 4 b is 8 so a plus b becomes 12 what is called as a do decagon 12 sided regular polygon 12 sided, so what is the exterior angle? 360 by 12. Exterior, which is 30. If exterior is 30, interior would be 180 minus 30 or 100 
and this is theta question simple elementary algebra what do i consider as elementary algebra quadratic equation maybe but factorization for sure expansions of a plus b whole square a minus b whole square cubes factorization of a square minus b they are all elementary algebra so we we'll take a question what is the largest positive integer such that such that n square plus 7n plus 12 divided by n square minus n minus 12 is a positive integer largest n largest n options are given this is not a theta question do you realize that this can be factorized the factors are n plus 3 This can be factorized, and the factors are a plus b and minus four. The question has turned into what is the largest value of n where n plus four divided by n minus four is a positive integer. Don't struggle. It's a MCQ. Which is the largest option? It says sixteen. If n is sixteen, is it integer? Sixteen plus four twenty. Sixteen minus four twelve. Twenty by twelve is not an integer. What is the second largest value? Twelve. Twelve plus four sixteen. Twelve minus four eight. Wow. Thank you. Answer n plus b. Using options, using elementary algebra factorization. Done. Profit and loss percentages all over the place. Very popular throughout the exams. Cat is no exception. Slot two had many questions. A shopkeeper sells two tables, each procured at cost price p. Cost price is same. So normally we take that to be hundred. So p is hundred. This is the cost price of the two tables. He sells them to Amol and Asi. At a profit of twenty percent and a loss of twenty percent, so Amol gets it at one twenty. Asim, because twenty percent loss, he gets it at eighty. Amol sells his table to Bimal at a profit of thirty percent. So another thirty percent is added, and if I add thirty percent, it's basically this calculation. So this is one hundred. You can use the calculator if you want. This is going to be one fifty-six. So Amol sells his table to Bimal. This is Bimal. While Asim sells his table to Barun at a loss of thirty percent. It means eighty times hundred minus thirty is seventy divided by hundred again. Two hundred fifty-six. Seven times. Seven times eight, fifty-six. This is one. Shopkeeper sold it to Amol and Asim at these two prices. Amol sold uh, sold it to Bimal at one fifty-six. Asim sold it to Baru at fifty-six. What is the if if Amol if the amounts paid by Bimal and Baru are x and y? This is x. This is y. Then what is the ratio? X minus y divided by p. What is x minus y? Hundred. What is p? Hundred. MCQ. What's the first option? One is to one. Finish. The question I'm going to discuss doesn't exactly fit into arithmetic, nor into geometry. It's not really elementary algebra. But see, even questions which are outside these topics, how easy, easy they can be if you are willing to look at them after doing everything else. Six-digit number. Six, that's the rightmost digit, is the sum of the first three digits. So let's write it down. A, 
E, C, D, E, F. This is the sixth digit number. That means A has to be at least one. They are saying the rightmost digit is the sum of the first three digits. So this F is nothing but A plus B plus C. That's the first statement. The fifth digit is the sum of the first two digits. So E is A plus B. The third digit is equal to first digit. So C is A. The second digit is two times the first digit. So B is 2A. Fourth digit is the sum of fifth and sixth. The fourth digit is the sum of A plus B plus A plus B plus C. The fourth digit is the sum of fifth and sixth digit. The largest possible value for the fourth digit. What is the maximum value here? Common sense. What is the common sense? A has to be at least 1. Let us put A 1. If A is 1, B is 2, C is 1. B will worry about what is E? A plus B e is 3. What is F? A plus B plus C. 1 plus 2 plus 1, 4. And what is D? E plus F. This is E plus F. What is it? 7. So if A is 1, 4th digit is 7. Let's increase it. If A is 2, then B will be 4, C will be 2, E will be 6, F would be 8, and what about this fellow? 6 plus 8, 14. Can a digit of a number be 14? Impossible. We're gone. Maximum 7. Answer. A question that occurs in many tests, and I'm sure our sediment is full of these questions. There are two sequences given. Both are arithmetic progressions, and they're asking for how many common terms are there. What is the first sequence? 15, 19, 23, 27, all the way to 450. The second sequence is also an arithmetic progression. It begins with 19, then 24, 29, and it ends at 464. How many common terms are there? Can you see that the first common term is 19? And what do you think? What is the difference? 4. What is the difference? 5. So what do you think will be the next common term is going to be the LCM of 4 and 5, which is 20. That will be the next common term will be 39. So 19, 39, 59, etc, etc, up to, without exceeding 415. How do you do that? It's entirely up to you. Answer is going to be 20. Very, very simple. Now that we have looked at approximately 18 questions from slot 1, slot 2, etc., what is the learning from all this? The solutions and correct answers and all that is a different part. The learning, in my opinion, is actually a reconfirmation that the elementary and the basic topics, such as arithmetic, arithmetic group, which consists of ratio, proportion, percentage, profit and loss. Simple interest, compound interest, time and work, time and distance is a very important group. There were 14 questions in each slot on arithmetic alone. The next important group is geometry, triangles, polygons, circles and things like that. There were 6 questions in each slot. Together 20. And then there were questions on elementary algebra. So maybe 24, 25 questions all together just on 3 things. Given that the projected cutoff is only 35, I would like each one of you to take solace and comfort 
that you could have achieved this very easily if you could have attempted 16, 17, 18 questions with reasonable accuracy. And we have seen how the solutions can be obtained in arithmetic area by assuming things to be 100, not writing down equations, using our common sense to analyze problems, whether it is time and distance, whether it is a geometry question, and then sometimes using a shortcut. The shortcuts are applicable not only for these areas, but they are eminently applicable to higher math as well. And when we do the remaining questions, and if you happen to see those videos, I would request you to see those videos later on when they are uploaded. You will realize how simply powerful techniques can be used to reduce the complexity of what is called as a higher math question. And then you will be a champion, let me tell you. Because you are already good at the basics of high school math, which is uh, arithmetic, geometry and elementary algebra and with techniques, shortcuts and options, using options, you will be a complete champion of the quant section, whether you do exam other than CAT or uh, you want to do CAT 20, again, it's up to you, all the best, thank you very much.